What is going on, Browns fans? Welcome to the Cleveland Pulse YouTube channel. I am your host, Justin Harold, and with me, as always, my co-host, Jeff Santa. Today, we have a special Browns preview for you because it's not just the regular season. It's not just week one. It's not week 18. It's the week of the playoffs. And your first game of the year for the playoffs, Browns versus the Texans at Texans. Jeff, it's a big one. It's the first time that we've been able to do this in two years now. Feels great. Feels good to be here in a regular season. No COVID, no nothing, whatever you want to talk about. Full crowds, huge implications. Obviously, we've made it here to the point with the roster that we have, the roster we're about to put on the field Saturday. How are you feeling? How are you doing? How's this week treating you? I mean, I just think it's just a, a good situation to be in. That's something, you know, that me and you have started over the last four years, you know, being the Cleveland Pulse, and we've been able to cover two different NFL playoffs, not to mention, you know, the other, you know, events as well, obviously with the Cavaliers. But, two, you know, some teams, they don't go to the playoffs, we know, better than anyone in years, a decade. So two in the last four years. You have guys with experience on this playoff experience on this roster, and that's just crazy to say. Like random people you wouldn't even think of. Obviously, you have your Miles Garrett to the world and your Denzel Wards, but like Sione Taki Taki. Taki Taki was on the last <laughs> playoff roster, and I'm like, I'm like, had, I'm an like all right. had an interception or two? No, had one interception and, in the first and, playoff. And I want to go on like kind of a bigger rant about how I feel this matchup is condensed, but the top of that, you know discussion is we have more playoff experience here it's plain and simple like that they're a younger team they haven't had as many guys who have been here before so we're on the road and we'll talk about it but i'm excited can't wait uh, it's gonna be a great time if you could do me the favor of pulling up that playoff bracket to show for the crowd uh, as you guys can see up here we have the lovely graphic for the afc right now the browns playing the texans the dolphins playing the chiefs and then we have the steelers playing the bills obviously those games will all be determined after ours but as you can see this is an interesting picture just to quickly just put all you know worries aside if the Browns win this game and the other lower seeds do not lose, the Dolphins beating Kansas City or the Steelers beating the Bills, um, we will not have to play the Ravens. But that obviously means we still have to take care of business, which we'll get into in a minute. And then we have to look for the Miami Dolphins probably to end up beating the Chiefs is the most likely scenario because I don't think the Bills or I don't think the Steelers have enough juice right now to beat the Bills. But again, it's very interesting how, uh, you know, they do reseed. It is our first time really in this uh, unique position and obviously not wanting to have to play the Ravens who we've beaten before. Um, we've been at, I think, their best. Um, but sure. um, one of those things that once you get to playoff territory, it's a whole different game. I was trying to talk to a couple of my clients today that, you know, um, they're all talking about how Watson was able to beat them and, you know, not just Watson, but the whole team was able to beat them earlier in the season. I'm just saying this is the first time that uh, a lot of teams outside of the Browns are healthier going into the playoffs. So um, something to keep track of, but um, speaking of those injuries, um, for the Browns and for the Texans, a couple of interesting points to have here. Um, one for me, obviously, is um, let's just start with the Texans, honestly, because for me, Jeff, as you can see here, large, large injury report for them with a lot of questionable guys here. The only guy out as of right now, Jerry Hughes. Um, but I did see that they were getting a couple of their defensive ends that did not play the first time around against us. I believe um, – uh, Well, I don't think Will Anderson played the first time we played him. I think it was actually Greener. I think it was – no, maybe you're right. Maybe it was Hughes that didn't – or Anderson that didn't play against us. But either way, um, a nice kind of injury report for our end looking at um, the Texans here. Hopefully, you know, a lot of guys will play through injuries. It is just what it is. This is a wild card round. They have to – you know, it's you make it or you don't. And so a lot of people know that. Again, when we go over to our little injury report, if I can pull that up here in a second from Mary Kay, um, we did have a couple of new updates today. Um, obviously, yesterday we did see Grant Delpit get activated from the IR. And Jeff, I know we probably want to talk about that a little bit. But as you can see here, our kicker, our starting kicker is still out. Hopkins would have been nice to have him in a dome. 
um, in what I think will be, a, when we get the predictions, a close game. Mm. Um, Thornhill, questionable. I expect him to play. I think that's just his uh, injury from two weeks ago that he's dealing with and, you know, um, whatnot. Tillman going out is – it's it's not going to be a huge blow. Just unlucky uh, though. Kind of felt like he was just getting his footing, and now he's, he's and he got hurt in a kind of a meaningless game. But you have to have people still. You still have to field a roster for that game. It was like one of those things where you felt like um, David and Joku in the first like one or two games with Joe Flacco was kind of like getting getting mm-hmm. going, and then it really really got going. And I felt that way for Tillman for the past couple of games with Flacco. So it's just unfortunate because of how thin our offense is already is but the biggest one coming today denzel with that questionable knee that he hurt in practice from what i've been able to gather it is not a significant injury to the point that um they really expect him to be out for this game um it didn't seem like he came out of practice it didn't seem like he had to leave the field um but again one of those things to monitor um for me that's the biggest piece of news Mainly because when you think about this matchup with the Texans, Jeff, you know, you think about C.J. Stroud and their wide receivers. You know, I don't think you think about the wide receivers specifically by name, but you think of C.J. Stroud's been able to get a lot of these guys the ball in great amounts. And it's not just one player. You know, there's not a DeAndre Hopkins there anymore or uh, Brandon Cooks or whatnot. So they have quite a few players that can go and get the ball for them. But on our end, we have plenty of DBs. I and I'm just going to put out that I think we have the best cornerback group of any any team in the NFL with sure. all three of Denzel Ward, Martin Emerson Jr., and Greg Newsom healthy. Um, the back you know, safety group is a little questionable, but those three alone could lock down an entire receiver group. And then you have to worry about a tight end or a running back every now and then. So crazy. But – what is what is the injury report do for you here, Jeff? What are you, what have you looked at? What are you seeing? And what is your biggest uh, turnout here? So the Delpit activation seems like a formality, just just you know for f- the future. Um, Ward getting hurt today, obviously not great. I th- like like you said, I think he's going to go. I think you just have to give it a try. Um, it is your season on the line, but injuries aside, and this is just a weird weird place to be in we've dealt with it all year it would be like weird if we were like fully healthy going and you know it, well not fully healthy obviously but if we were on the healthier side going into this game i i don't think that's going to be the case as far as the injury report but to segue that into how i break this game down because obviously a little bit biased i think but out of the first round i think we have the most even matchup as far as us and the tech uh, the texans just looking at it from like Top down view. Quarterback, let's just let's just run through some some groups here. Quarterback, I think they do a better job of not turning the ball over. I don't think it would be unfair to give the nod to Stroud, even though he is a rookie, that maybe in this matchup he's a little bit better of an option to quarterback. No knock on Flacco. I still expect him to do his thing. But that takes me to my second point. What I talked about earlier. Experience. We have more of it. We have even to go further. I would take Stefanski over D'Amico Ryans all day. No disrespect to him. I think Ryans is going to be a good head coach in the league, but we got more experience. We have the better head coach, I think. And just from an overall standpoint, I think they might have a better offense, maybe, and I think we definitely have a better defense. What this all boils down to to me is that we played with the next man up mentality. We have guys who have come into their own with these injuries. This is something we've talked about. Not only do you have somebody like Ronnie Hickman playing his ass off, you have DeAnthony Bell, who's been a good secondary piece to that, you know, that secondary and that and the back end of the field. Thornhill's going to go. It's not like we've we've had success without Delpit. I think we're a better defense with him. Don't get me wrong, but we're still a top echelon defense, even though he's hurt. Same way with Ward. Even if Ward's not 100 percent I feel confident in who else we have in that room to get the job done. They have injuries too, they have stuff they have to work through. But here's my point of the week. You look at the players in this game, and I know that it's a football team. It's a more of a team aspect compared to the other major sports in the United States, I think. But we have the best player. Miles Garrett is the best player on the football field this Sunday or this Saturday. And there's no that's that's the statement. 
where we're hurting injuries, we basically got an extra week for some of these guys where Houston had to play four full quarters of football last week against the Colts and beat them on a drop pass. So we have guys who, yeah, they're hurt, but we have a handful of guys who have been healthy, got basically a week off, if not more, and because we played the game on Thursday night. So I'm expecting big things. And like you said, I'm expecting a close game, but man, I'm excited. Yeah, and for both these teams, they're both very good defensively, which is interesting. The most interesting thing that you pointed out was at the top, Jeff. These are the two most even matchups in the playoffs. I think, I think so. Right now, I think when you look at the pass game for both teams, they're heavy as of right now. Um, the run game for us has not been great with Nick Chubb out. It's obviously one of those things where the, the drop down from him to Jerome Ford to Kareem Hunt is a huge leap, but it wouldn't have been as – it would still be a huge leap, but it wouldn't have been as bad if maybe our offensive line was also healthy and sure. whatnot. But at the same time, they're doing they're getting the job done in the passing game and thus I think leaning a little bit more into Flacco's, you know, I would rather lean into Flacco's older, more, you know um, – Yes. I'm trying to think of like the word um, – It's almost like wisdom. Yeah, let's just go with wisdom for right now until I can find a better word. But <laughs> his wisdom, instead of like going with what for the longest time has worked for the Browns and has been the bread and butter um, of the offense. And I think for Stefanski, it's going to be an interesting first 15 plays because I think, you know, a lot of people will tell you uh, once you get out of the first 15 plays, it's then it's anyone's game. But I think the first 15 plays of this game will be indicative of how the rest of the I game agree. is called. I think if you see great success on that first drive, they're going to keep changing it up. If you don't, and this is going to sound weird, if they don't find success, I think they're going to unfortunately run the ball early. And that's where it's going to be like, okay, we we tried. We we did the thing that we struggled with early or early in games, and we determined it's – we can't figure out a fix for it. Our guys just can't, with the personnel we have right now, cannot beat their guys one-on-one -on -one or down the line of scrimmage, whatever. Go into the passing game, trust Flacco's eyes, trust his mind, and let him, you know, it was it was great to hear those things about, you know, um, they only let the two guys who have won Super Bowls talk, and that's Joe Flacco and Rodney McLeod. <laughs> and that's crazy. Right. But why do you let those guys speak? Because they've been there. Right, because right. They've, they've won gone it, all the way. And yep. they've been in a part of it. They just aren't, you know, I'm sure there's a, probably a guy or two on the roster who have won a Super Bowl and really just not done anything. There's plenty of those guys all over the team. But to get a guy like Joe Flacco, who is leading the team right now, and a guy like Rodney McLeod, who wasn't brought in as a, a leader on any, you know, outside of special teams and, you know, a little bit of defense, you know, he wasn't brought in to be that vocal point. But to take the experiences and to put them into those minds of the younger players, hearing JOK talk, hearing uh, Denzel talk. And again, Denzel talked earlier this year about – or talked earlier this week about how that um, team meeting with those two players mm -hmm. got them in a mood that wasn't even established the first time they went into the playoffs, which is something completely different yep. and unique to this team. Again, th the team from two years, three years ago – very young, very different composition to this year where I think like there's a reason why people are talking about, and obviously we're taking it one game at a time. We're always going to do that, but people are talking about it like, Hey, we have the potential to go even further with all the injuries we have, yep. you know, and it's very, you know, telling of how the leadership from Stefanski to just letting Joe Flacco, a guy who was on the couch just a couple of weeks ago, lead this team because even he knows Joe has been further than he has. And Absolutely. that's okay. You know, that's what you rely on. And that's what the quarterback coach relationship should be. It should be like that trust between both of them to be like, you go out, you get the guys in the huddle to understand what I want. And we're going to do big things. And that's what it's been for the last six weeks that we've had or whatever, how many weeks it's been with Joe Flacco. So I'm very interested in like, I have this being a high-scoring game, Jeff. Mm. I don't know where you are in the predictions for this, but I've been going back and forth. I've been 
in the weeds of this because man, <laughs> in the weeds, they are a frustrating team to play against because they're never out of it. I've right. watched them come back from twenty down, um, in the middle of the third quarter to come back and win by three. Which again, that's my biggest issue with this game is that. I just wish, I just wish we could have played it in Cleveland. Absolutely. They wouldn't stand a chance mm. against and our us. De- our defense is a lot better in Cleveland, too. Yeah. But here's my thing. And, like, just to keep going with what you're saying, like, yeah. Juan Thornhill, you know, Super Bowl champ. Like, how many, how many teams around the league, especially in this playoff run, can you, like, look around and be like, oh, this guy's been here before. We know Kansas City. But, like, even, like, Baltimore, even the yeah. one seed, how many guys on that roster are Super Bowl champs that actually have contributed? I don't know if any guy on the Ravens roster, unless I'm missing somebody, has, like, experience like Flacco does. But here, here's my thing at the end of the day. Even I can't think. This is a game where I'm going to hope and urge Stefanski that just do what you've been doing. Like the Texans are a good football team. It's going to be difficult to win in the playoffs. They're not, they're not at that next level. They're not at that next tier of, of of NFL teams. Not saying that we are either, but I fully believe that even though it's the Texans and even though it's kind of a big no, no and a huge boo-boo in playoff football, I still think we could win this game with one or two turnovers. I fully believe that if you're playing a Baltimore, if you're playing a Kansas city, I'm not so sure. Obviously, it's when those turnovers come, and for me, it's going to be about staying on schedule or ahead of schedule. If we turn the ball over and the defense is on the field for the majority of the game, it's going to be an uphill battle to win this game on the road. We can't have the defense playing all these snaps. We have to control the time of possession. We have to control the tempo and the momentum. The last thing I'll say, and it's my one little negative, I feel like, of the whole episode before we get to predictions is what worries me about this matchup is that we've played them once. We didn't see Stroud, and that was the big Amari Cooper game. Did we were, was was the cat let out of the bag in that game as far as dialing up all of our big plays? Is D'Amico Ryan's gonna just scout that film and adjust and kind of have the defense ready to go and we're clamped? Or is their back end that exploitable and the big plays are going to continue? Or does it lead to turnovers? And then what's the scouting been like with Stroud? I'm sure Stefanski has been watching two weeks of film with Stroud. I'm sure he wasn't watching that much film again for the Cincinnati game for Jake Browning. At least I really hope he wasn't because who cared? But that's what I'm, that's my biggest contention is it's going to be our experience versus I feel like they have more intel going into this game based on our previous matchup. Yeah, I'm for me, it's I like your point. I, I like that we have kind of the experience and the uh, know how to get through this game. Uh, obviously, we played the Steelers uh, rival team at our um, at our home in the playoffs last time uh, to start off this to start the playoffs off. But that was, on, that was on the road, too. No, we were at home for that, weren't we? Mm-mm, that was in Pittsburgh. Ooh, we were but it was co- but it was COVID, so it didn't really matter. That's the difference. For some reason, I thought I was at. That there's game. a re- there's a real home there's a real home crowd there, and you know those. I know people are posting the tickets online, like oh, there's still tickets. Yeah, there's going to be a decent Browns contingency down there, like oh, yeah. for sure. And it's not like a diehard. I don't mean. I know they like football. I think down the there. Texans stadium could be like. This is probably like I don't. I don't 25, this, 25. I was going to say. I was yeah. going to say. I was gonna say twenty to like 30. it's not like we're walking into Arrowhead, like or right. or Akersher Stadium, like right down the road in Pittsburgh. Like it's not that. Like they're right. just not like they're not that level of fan base. Like we know this. Like there's other stuff to do in Texas. There's a bunch of sporting teams. There's not, you know, there might be less allegiance down there, but it's still gonna be something to overcome. But like we talked about, we have these guys. You think yeah. all the Joe Flacco playoff runs in the past went swimmingly? Same with Juan Thornhill. When stuff hits when shit hits the fan, you have the guys who are like, all right. Come to me. I'm going to tell you what we're doing. We're going to go out there and do it. And I feel like we haven't had that ever. Yeah. And uh, sorry. Thank you for picking up my fumble there. For but sure. I was trying to get to the point that they do have home field advantage. You know, the dome, everything playing into that yep. factor. You know, that's why I'm saying if we had it in Cleveland, I don't think they'd stand a chance Mm-mm. because it's in Houston. It's in a dome. All the factors are, you know, all weatherly factors are taken out. There's nothing yep. to be like, all right, well, the ball is moving with the wind. Like, no. This is going to be a game where best beats best. It's definitive, but man, do I not like it because of that reason. That's why I got it 31-28 Browns mm. in overtime. 
Overtime. You get the overtime shout and, and it's, I not, love and it's that. not a touchdown win, unfortunately. It's I gonna love be that. a nail biter. It's gonna be Riley Patterson that. for the win. Dude, it's gonna be me having a heart attack from That's start fine. to finish. That's fine. That's what we signed up for. I'm in the same vein. Um, I actually have it just one, I just have it a little bit closer. 28 27 Browns. And I'm telling you, I think Flacco turns the ball over, but what I will say and I think he turns it over late, Jeff. This is not, this. is I'm going to give you my play, boy. We're up 14-7 at half. We come out, we score 21-7. He's been half. thinking about this like all week. Right yeah, I have. And then, boom, we go scoreless for like the entire rest of the third quarter going into the fourth quarter. It's close. We, they score twice, um, once in the third towards the end, once in the beginning of the fourth. And then, boom, we're fucking tied at 21. And then we both score touchdowns. We can't score for the rest of the game. Someone misses a game-winning field goal. Boom, boom, boom. They do that stupid um, and we overtime, win and then we we win it. But, See, man, I'm, I'm but That would be crazy. I love that you laid that out, but I just don't think, like, we just got off to such a good start in the 2020 playoff game against the Steelers that I think, and what I want to be the calming sense here, and I just knocked – I already knocked on wood, but I think Flacco turns the ball over early. And I'm just urging people to stay calm. That's all I have to say. We'll we'll write the ship. We'll keep it competitive, and we'll win the game. I hope that it's uh, it's early and not later, like I think. But that all being said, Jeff got us with a one point win in regulation. I've got us with a three point win in overtime. What do you guys have yes. as the final score for the Browns? wild card matchup against the Houston Texans. Guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. We super appreciate it. Um, give us a like, give us a subscription, uh, hit the bell notification. Again, let us know what your guys' thoughts about just the general playoffs are for the Browns in this you know, comment section. Uh, we really want to hear you guys. We really want to talk with you guys. We really want to feel the hype for this game. We're only two days away. Um, and it's going to be great. It's going to be a ton of fun. The Browns are going to come out with a win. And we're just going to keep riding this ship, baby. So, uh, Jeff, with that one uh, all being said, we'll catch you guys in the next one.